Welcome back to the Crochet Chronicles with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the bobble in fringe blanket. Today we're gonna learn how to make this. If you'd like to omit the fringe off this you can. This is done after the project is done and we're gonna be doing one row that allows you to do that really quite easily as we're working our way through. So not until the end that you're gonna be able to fringe it if you choose to. So there is a large section of repeat pattern. If you look from here all the way to where the fringe joins up here this is a whole section that is a repeat and then the fringe goes in we make one row special so that you can apply the fringe later. So let's take a look further into this project. It's a really easy one. You just gotta follow it step by step. At the time of filming this video we noticed that row number 11 was actually drawn incorrectly. We actually have it here. It says worked in the front loops but it uh, doesn't match row number 11 here of going into the back loops. Now that I've got this far into the tutorial it is actually technically into the back loops. So what is written here is correct. This is incorrect. Now I've already notified your inspirations and this will be a change in the future by their design team. So let's take a look at the diagram on page number two. Now on the front page it tells you that the multiples are 24 plus 29. So what this means is that you keep chaining in sets of 24 if you'd like to alter the size from what they have. So you go 24, 24, 24, 24 and once you're satisfied the next group will be 29 and then that'll keep everything in balance. The repeat pattern that we see is all the way from rows number four through 11 and then what they do is they just show you number 12 just to show you that it's repeating itself. But rows number four through 11 is the repeat. Now you're going to notice that it's a really swathed of a section. It's really quite large. But you'll notice that in row number 11 you see these half arc, half moon like arcing shapes that you see. When you look down here it's worked in the front loop only. So if you're applying the fringe the other loop that will be in the back loop at this time which will be the, the right side of the project is where you'll be attaching the fringe. So you can decide on row number 11. Are you gonna go with the fringe or not and if you're not then just go into both uh, stitches and if you want the fringe just go into the uh, front loop only as we're working our way through it. So this is a really neat idea. You're gonna need an eight millimeter size L crochet hook and let's take a look at the yarn of choice. So let's talk about the yarn. See these really big balls? This is Bernat Chunky. There's also a version of Bernat Softy Chunky and you need five of these balls in order to play. So they're 400 grams just like it says in the instructions with their 14 ounces and there's 431 yards per ball. And so you only need five of these in order to play and this is something that you can find on yarnspirations.com and maybe near a retailer near you as well. So without further ado let's go back to the diagram and let's begin to work our way through it. So let's go back to the diagram. Most times there's a diagram I will you walk you through it at least uh, go through it. In this case I will take you back to it multiple times in today's tutorial. A because I need to look for myself but B also for your entertainment and education <laughs> as well. I don't know if this is entertaining for you if you don't get it. So um, let's uh, begin. So we're just gonna make our beginning chain and then we're gonna come back in our row number one. We're gonna establish we're at the bottom of the valley and the peak valley and peak. So you'll be noticing that I'm gonna say that we're going to crochet to the valley and then we're gonna crochet up to the peak and we're gonna be using those terms today. And when I say we, me, uh, we, I mean me. So let's uh, without further ado let's get started and I'm going to show you a small sample but you could chain as many as that you'd like. So today I'm gonna be substituting with Bernat Softy Baby Chunky. Um, it's not available in the big format but it, for my tutorial reasons I'm just gonna be using this because I have spare yarn of this. So I'm going to begin and you can either chain 125. That'll get you the right count and if you'd like to change the size then you would just have to change the counts. To do that you're gonna chain a multiples of 24. So either chain 125 or chain a multiples of 24. So one, two, three, four and five and count in the multiples that you need to in order to get yourself all the way across. And I will talk to you about the additional 29 when I get there. So if you're chaining in the multiples and making up your own size, once you're satisfied with it don't forget that you have to compensate for it to be going up and down. So when you look at the tire chain when you pull it across it's gonna look a lot wider than it really will once you start the up and down motion. Once you're satisfied with the width of it you need to add another 29 to stay in balance. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 and 29. So now that I have my additional 29 added to this I'm now ready for row number one. 
So as we begin row number one, we're gonna start off and we're gonna start four chain from the hook and we're going to start this next stitch to be three together double crochet. Do you see how they have the same base but the top, uh, sorry, a different base but the same top? That means that there's three together. So the, the fourth one, the fifth and the sixth become one. So this chaining three is actually a separate stitch at the end of the project. You'll see that it looks like that on the uh, row number two. So what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be nine double crochets that go up by themselves like in, in each of the chains and then there's five into the next one. Then nine coming down and then the next five come together with a five together double crochet and then we're going to then go nine up, five into the same one, nine down and then eventually you'll hit the other side. So in the very final after you get your nine, the, the next one, 10th, 11th, 12th will be three together double crochet and there will be one double crochet in the final. So let's do it on the work. Okay, let's begin. Fourth chain from the hook, we're going to start with uh, doing a three together double crochet. So the chains that we're about to skip are, that is a double crochet by itself. So one, two, three and go to the back uh, hump of the chain and I want you to insert your hook in, yarning over, pulling it through and then pull through two and hold it, don't finish that stitch. Yarn over, do the next one, in, pull through, pull through two and hold it and then finally again yarning over into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold it. So these three are going to be three together double crochet and this is a double crochet by itself so pull through everything. Okay, so don't forget that this final one is a stitch by itself, it's not included in this group of three. So do you remember how many that we have to go up? It's nine. So we're going up to the peak. So nine du uh, double crochets by itself. So one and keep moving down the chain. This is two, three, four, there's five. Six, seven, and eight. And the ninth one is the final one. And then you're at the peak. So in this one here, the next stitch is going to have five double crochets in it. So let's count these out. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So there's a lot going in on that one stitch and then starting in the next one, so the next nine in a row, we're gonna go down to the valley again, will be by themselves as a double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So nine all the way down. So once you get in all the way down you have to then scoop it up in the valley itself. So the next five in a row will each be a double crochet that will be together. So let's start that. So we're gonna just yarn over, go into the next one pull through, pull through two and hold it and we wanna do that five times. So let's go to the next one. So you're gonna see that this sucks up a lot of those extra chains. You think the chain is really quite long but when you start doing this you realize it's not as long as you thought. So how many loops will there be after you do five of these? There should be six. So you have the grouping of five and then the starting one so that it gives you six loops. Pull through all six. And now we're gonna go back up to the peak again. So the next nine in a row are by themselves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we're at the top of the peak. So that means that the next one has to be five double crochets in the same one. So please do that. 
So uh, hopefully you're starting to understand how this is gonna work all the way across. So we're gonna put five in this one and then start heading down. So in my case I'm running to the end of the chain. So you will eventually have to keep going up and down until you come to the very end which I'm about to show you next. So just put me on pause as you go up and down. So nine down, five together, nine up and then five into the same one and that will give you these peaks that will go up and down. Once you come out to the very end that you're about to get there, the next nine in a row, so I've just done the top peak, the next nine will be by itself. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. Now the next three will come together. So only three, see how there's four left. So the next three are together. So they're double crochet, three together. Okay, so pull through all four loops and then it's one double crochet in the final chain. And then that concludes that row. So now you will have had, if I just back out a little bit here, you'll have the motion of up and down. I just did a smaller sample here and we're going to then continue our journey. So I realized I forgot to show you my sample that I've been working on. So this is my sample that I have and what we've just done is we've done the bottom layer here and now we're gonna do row number two. Row number two will repeat itself within a section of the repeat several times. So just keep an eye on how we're gonna do row number two because you'll end up referring it to it, uh, it, it again. Then row number three you're gonna have these spaces and then we're gonna be doing like a number two again but it's just uh, you just gotta watch where you stick your hook and then we're going to be doing these bobbles that you see here that will appear. So technically I'm looking at the back side right now but the good side is right here and you can tell by the bobble work that we have. Now what I have here is that this is not the entire repeat um, to go so I had to do much longer. I just wanted to um, just make sure I understood this pattern so I just did a little section and we'll be doing the whole repeat with you on camera today. So as we begin row number two we're going to chain up three and then the next three in a row will become three together and then guess how many stitches go up? It's nine. Then at the top there will be five into the top one. So what I want you to do is look for the middle one of the grouping of five just to verify that you are where you are and then you're gonna do nine down. The next five will become five together double crochet and then nine up, five into the same one and then nine down and eventually you'll hit the other side where the last three are together and one double crochet in the final. Let's try row number two. You will have to repeat row number two concept for rows number seven, eight and nine in the future and that's why I've written that there. So seven, eight and nine. Okay let's begin row number two. So just turn your work and let's begin. So we're going to chain up three which counts as a double crochet and the next three that you have one, two and three are gonna become three together for double crochet. So wrap the hook and into the next stitch pull through, pull through two and hold it and do that for three stitches in a row and that's a three together double crochet. So the three there are gonna become together and this is the starting one so pull through everything and don't forget that this chaining three that you did is a double crochet in the end. So how many to go up? If you said nine that's the right answer. If you said something else try again. So we have one, two, three, four, and five and I'm gonna show you a, a tip in a moment. Six, seven, eight and nine. Now what I want you to, what I want you to notice, this is the grouping of five. I don't technically have to count if I'm confident in my stitching counts and the reason for it is that this is the grouping of five that you have the middle one of the grouping of five always has the five double crochets in it. So my point being is that I counted nine and it ended up to being the one before the middle and if I was just looking for the middle one I could have just nailed it without having to count. So that's completely up to you on how you wanna do that. So the middle one of the grouping of five at the top which is the tenth stitch from the, uh, from the bottom is it's gonna be five double crochets in it. So what I would do is that you count, I would count in the down motion for sure. So you wanna go nine down. So we're gonna do nine. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now the next five in a row will become five together. But you could have told where the bottom one is. Or you could have you could have seen where the bottom one is. This is the middle bottom. These are the other two and the other two are after it. So these five right here are the middle. So we're gonna put those together. So just yarning over and just collect them and what we'll do five together double crochet. If you can see where you need to go you don't have to count as as, as uh, much. So you have five that's on here with the starting one. So that gives you six loops. Pull through everything and then you're gonna go nine all the way up. But if you're confident, so I'm not gonna count, I'm going to stop and look for the middle one of the top peak and say that's where the fifth is gonna go and then what I'll do is I'll count back just to show you on camera how accurate it can be. And if I'm wrong, you'll see me goof up here on live camera or pre-recorded camera in your case. So I believe that the next one is the middle one. So seeing the grouping of five, so you have one, two, this is the third one, so that's the middle, four and five. Let's count up from the bottom and see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So it was nine up. So you see I'm right. So if you can look for where the signs are, you can avoid the counting and it'll be a lot easier. So what I want you to do is that I want you to keep going up and down in the motion all the way across for row number two on your project and then eventually you'll get to the other side. So when you're coming down in the final, you're gonna do how many down? If you said nine, then you treat yourself to an Oreo cookie or something and I'm not gonna count. I'm confident in my numbers because I wanna show you something because I'm just trying to show you that you don't need to sit there and count all your stitches if you're confident. You can if you wish but it was nine down and what am I looking for? I'm looking for the final four stitches so this is one, two, three and four. So I'm gonna double crochet in the next one. So the final four stitches are where I'm going to play for the final edge. So the next three are gonna be three together and then double crochet into the turning chain and that will conclude off row number two. So then you can turn your work and then just take a look and see how things are looking at this point. So let's go back to the diagram. Let's go for row number three. So row number three we're going to then just chain up three. The first three become together just like you see and we're gonna create these gapping spaces. So we're gonna chain one after, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. You're looking for, I wrote the number five. There's gonna be five of these chain one gapping spaces and this will take, should take you if you're counting it correctly to the middle one where you'll put five double crochets in then you'll chain one and then start going down in the other motion. So there's five spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five and so on all the way across. Let's try your hand on row number three. So let's try row number three. We're gonna chain up three, counts as your first double crochet and now the next three are gonna be coming together. So starting this one, this one and this one is three together right at the edge. Okay, so that's nice. Done. So we're going to start the gapping spaces. So you're gonna chain up one, skip one and double crochet in the next. And they keep doing that. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So you see how you're creating the space? So how many spaces were we looking for? Five. So I'm not counting them. I'm just looking for five spaces. And when I say by not counting, I'm not counting how many of these double crochets I'm throwing in. I'm just looking for how many chain spaces I'm about to create. So the next one here happens to be the middle one and that's where I'm going to put in five double crochets. And I wanna show you something once I get these five in. So in order to have those five spaces you will have had four completed. So one, two, three, four and I chained one and then put my fi uh, five into this one which gives you this fi uh, fi uh, <laughs> five spaces left. So let's begin again. So you're gonna chain up one, skip one and 
double crochet in the next and you're gonna go all the way down and how many spaces are you gonna have? It's five. I know getting tongue uh, tongue tied today <laughs> even just saying that. So let's continue along and I'm looking for what I need to do. So at the base of these I also need to have my uh, five in a row. So let me just take a look. So I got one, two, three, four. So this is now my fifth one. So the next, so I'm gonna skip one and the next five are gonna become my five together like I had before. So how many loops will there be if you're doing five? There will be a total of six loops. So pull through them all and so let's just verify that we have five gapping spaces. Do you see them? So one, two, three, four, five. So that means it's correct. Chain one to start up then the next one. So skip the next double crochet and double crochet the next one after that. So all I want you to do is just go up and down all the way across for your entire row. And if you can look for the, what, how many of these spaces that you're doing, it's just a lot quicker. So there's four now done. Chain one and when I skip the next one, the next one's right here in the middle. So that means that there's five double crochets in that one. So one, two, that's three, four, and five. And then we're ready to go down again. So you see these gapping spaces are in. So eventually you're gonna hit to the other side. So you're just gonna go down what you already know. So skip in the first one, double crochet in the next. And there will be five spaces happening on this side as well. So I'm looking how many spaces are there. So there's one, two, three, four. So I'm about to do my fifth. That means that the next three in a row after I skip it will be th uh, three together double crochet. Right, do you see that? So there's five spaces. And then I'm just gonna immediately double crochet into the final turning chain. Never go into a space, just go into the chain itself. And then that concludes off row number three. Let's turn our work and let's take a look and see our fabulous work done so far. Let's go back to the diagram. We're about to start the repeat for this whole thing. So back to the diagram we go. Row number four begins the repeat of this all the way through number 11. There will be a total of eight rows in a row in order to complete that. So what we're going to start then is it's gonna be like number two but what we're gonna do is that we're gonna be using these chain one spaces. That's the difference. And then we're just gonna go up nine and then down nine and up nine and down nine to get ourselves uh, through row number four. Row number five we're gonna start doing our bobble work that we have. There's four bobbles by itself and then the uh, two here in the top share the same top and then four down, four up and then they share and then four down etc. So we'll see that later as well. And then row number six you're gonna see that we're gonna be sharing the chain two space with our double crochets all the way to the top and then coming down. You'll notice in the row number six that we're not gonna be doing like the together work. We're just gonna immediately coming in. So just watch for that. It may look confusing to you now but once you get there you'll see that happening as well. And then rows number um, seven through ten. So seven, eight, nine, and ten are all like row number two. So we're just gonna come down and just look at it and you can just do that. So seven, eight, nine, and ten. So four rows. Number eleven we're gonna be throwing in to the front loop to create the tassel work um, loop for the future if you'd like to and if you don't want to then don't worry about that. And then once you get row eleven done we're then going to start back up in row number four and work our way back through the program again. So without further ado let's start row number four. Let's get you started. So let's begin row number four. So we're gonna chain up three counts as a double crochet and the only time that you're not gonna start the same way that you always have been is on row number six and we'll cover that when we get there. That one's an unusual row to begin with. So the next three in a row which includes the three together and the chain one space and the double crochet is going to be three together. So you're gonna be using the chain one spaces as a stitch as well. And put those three together and so using the chain one spaces and the double crochets there's gonna be nine going up. You can count it so we'll count just for the sake of it this time. So one and then the next one is in a double crochet. That's two space for three, double crochet for four, space for five, 
double crochet for six. Space for seven. And then the next two double crochets are gonna be your eight and your ninth. So you can either look to the middle one, see this grouping of five? The middle one is gonna be five double crochets in this case. So you could have just not counted and just filled in the spaces and filled in the double crochets to work your way up. At the top of the peak, you're going to put in five double crochets. This is row number uh, four, which is very similar to row number two. And now you begin going down. So just starting in the next double crochet, you're just gonna work your way down. So at the bottom of these ones, you have to put your five together. So let's count those out going down. So we have one, two, space for three, double crochet for four, space for five, space for, or double crochet for six, space for seven, double crochet for eight, and next double crochet for nine, or space for nine. So the next double crochet, the space, the three to, or the five together, the next space and the next double crochet are your five that are in the bottom of the valley. So you just have to put all of those together. And if you can see where you need to go with that, then you don't have to count so much, do you? You can just look to where you need to go and just do it. So you'll have six loops on your hook, pull through all six. And now work your way up starting at the space. So I'm not gonna count this time. I'm just gonna just fill in the spaces and the double crochets with the new one, with the new double crochet right over it. And so I'm looking for the grouping of five double crochets at the top. The reason why tutorials exist are things like this. Tips that you can get um, that really don't say that you can kind of cheat the system by not having to count so much. It assumes that you're going to count so to be told that you don't need to count and you can see what to look for is why tutorials are really around. So the middle one are the grouping of fives. Let's just verify that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So the middle one is your tenth which then goes five double crochets. So eventually you'll hit to the other side of your project. You're gonna go up and down in this motion but eventually you'll get to the other edge and let's just go in the down motion down. So you can just start. So let's just count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is what I want you to look at. So the next double crochet, the next space, and the three together is going to be your final for three together. Okay, and then you're finally, your last turning chain is your final. Make sure you go right into a chain, not into a space. So if you can see in your final three that it's a double crochet chain space and the final three together, it works out beautifully. So we're gonna turn our work now and now we are going to start the bobble round which is round number five. So let's begin to do the bobbles. We are going to chain a total of three. There's your half or there's your double crochet. The next three are gonna be coming together. We then chain two, skip one and bobble into the next or this is like a popcorn, right? This is a popcorn. They call it a bobble in French but this is technically a popcorn. You chain two, skip one, bobble into the next, chain two and etc. So you will have four of these bobbles going up and then eventually you'll hit the top one peak. There will be two of those into that one. There's a chain three that separates it so it can lean open like that and then there will be four coming down and then you've got your five together, four going up and then five or two at the top and then so on. So this is a little bit of a lengthier round or row because the fact is that you're working on all these bobbles at the same time and we're going to begin to do that next. Okay, so let's begin to do row number five. So chain up three counts as your first double crochet and the next three are together. So the next three stitches just put those together. So you already know what you're doing with that. The only time that does not count like this is row number six. We haven't got there yet. So what we're going to do after you get that done, you're going to chain two 
and skip one and bobble into the next. To do the popcorn, it's called a bobble or popcorn technically, you are going to do five double crochets in there. So one, it's in the same one, two, three, four, and five. And this is technically called the right side bobble or popcorn. So drop the loop and insert it into the beginning one of the grouping of five from the front to the back. That's what makes it a right side popcorn and then you're just gonna put the loop back on and pull through just like that. And then you are going to then, you are then going to chain two. So the first one locks the popcorn and the next one makes it shift so that you can skip the next stitch. So you're going to skip the next stitch and popcorn in the next. So there's gonna be five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Once you got that, drop it, go to the first one of the grouping of five, front to back, pull it through, chain one to lock, chain two to shift so that you can skip one. So you're gonna skip one, you're gonna bobble into the next one after that. So there's five, drop it, go to the first one. So remember how many bobbles there were going up? There was a total of four. So I skipped one again and I'm doing my fourth bobble going up. I'm getting uh, trapped between the terminology of the name of the pattern and the stitch. This is a popcorn. So just go to the first one, loop it, pull through and then chain two. So let's take a look on how many popcorns there are. There's four going up so one, two, three, four. And when you skip the next one, you're in the middle of this one here, of the, of the top. So you're gonna start off and you are going to then put in your five um, double crochets to make your first popcorn. Okay, drop it, get the first one, pull it through. Chain three in this case because you're at the top of the of the peak and in the same one you're going to apply another popcorn in there. So just put another five double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five and drop it. Go to the first one and now you're gonna start going down the valley or going down back into the valley. So there's gonna be a total of four one, two, three, four. I'm not including the top peaks when I count that. So I'm going to go and just chain two and then skip the first one and bobble into the next popcorn in the next. So there's five. So two, three, four, and five. Drop it and chain two. So pull through chain one to lock, chain two to move on. So I'm gonna stay silent now as I work my way down. So I'm skipping every, I'm skipping the next stitch and popcorn into that one and I'm looking for five of these popcorns to be done. So I'm gonna stay silent now and just work on it. So I'm counting now and I have my top here and then there's four bobbles that go down. So one, two, three, and four. So after I get the fourth bobble in, I'm going to chain two and then I'm gonna skip one and the next five are going to become together. So we're just gonna do that. And it's kind of what you've already known to do before. 
it's just it's a it's a bobble it's a bobble uh, row so it think it it sounds like it's more complicated than it really is. So once you get your five there should be a total of six loops on the hook and pull through and then you're going to chain two to begin again. So one and two skip the next one and start to bobble into the next so popcorn. So I'm gonna stay silent as I work my way to the top once again. So I've worked my way back up and you can see I got one, two, three, four. I'm gonna chain two and my next one should be the middle one of the grouping of five which it is. So skipping one and I will apply my first popcorn there. And remember in the top you have your two popcorns into the same one and they're separated by a chain three at the very top of the peak. So once the first one is pulled in so one, two, three going into the exact same one popcorn again. Once the top ones are in you're going to chain two and then work your way down. So eventually you'll hit to the other side of your work which I'm about to do. So there will be five popcorn or four popcorns going down after the peak. So I'm just finishing up the final popcorn. So I had four going down from the peak and I chain two, skip one and the next three become together. This is row number five. So you have to do this every now and then and then to finish off it's one double crochet in the turning chain. So you can see that this pro really provided the texture that is in this particular project and now we're going to then go up into row number six. Number six is the only really unusual row. Let's take a look at the diagram again. So number six is the only one that's kind of outstanding in the sense that it's not the one, it doesn't look like it belongs but it's part of what keeps the texture and the flow. So you're gonna chain up three which counts as the first one and then the first uh, two. So the first uh, three together and the chain two space is one uh, double crochet and then each of these chain two spaces there's two double crochets in them and then you just jump to the chain three put five and so it's two, 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 two and in the bottom it's the last one here and the middle and the next one is one by itself and so on. Let's try row number six. 
Let's try row number six. You're gonna chain up three counts as a double crochet. You're coming into the next one which is the top of the next three together and then you're coming to the next uh, the first space that's available to you and it's one double crochet. So now we just simply jumped into the next uh, chain two spaces and you apply two double crochets into each of those all the way to the top. So just jump to the next chain two space and then jump to the next chain two space. So this one is a really quick row to be quite frank with you. So once you get those chain two spaces filled in you're gonna eventually come to the uh, top one which is the chain three and in that one there's gonna be five double crochets in it so it can do the turn. So one, two, three, four and five. So you immediately just start coming down. So what we need to do is we need to pay attention to the middle section where it comes down here. So the next chain two spaces each have two double crochets in them. So let's just do that and then we'll catch up at the bottom. Because you're working in the spaces it goes pretty quick because you just gotta open the space and insert the hook. And when I say open it just means that you just gotta stick your hook in the space. So here we go. So you have a space, the bottom and the space. So each one of those are just a double crochet. Okay, so there's no twos in there. And then once you have that done, immediately jump to the next chain two space and then put twos in there going all the way to the peak again. So you just gotta watch the tops and the bottoms of the peaks. The bottom more likely than anybody because you gotta do something unusual. You're not doing anything together. You're just kind of maintaining the spaces. And then eventually you get to the top of the peak and there will be five double crochets there. So I want you to go up and down all the way. This is row number six. And then eventually you'll come to the other side like I'm about to. So after the peak is done it's two double crochets into each going almost all the way back down to the edge. There was three double crochets that stand by themselves at the very edge if that helps you to know that but you'll see that on the diagram as well. Okay, so I'm putting two into this one here. So there is a bobble left, a space, a three together and a double crochet. So you just immediately just one double crochet in the space, one into the three together and then one into the top of the turning chain and that will conclude off row number six. So let's turn our row, our work. We're going to now do rows number seven, eight, nine and ten and I will do them. I will just get you started with row number seven but they're exactly the next four rows are exactly what you did in row number two. So we're about to start row number seven. So row number seven is exact, exactly identical to row number two just the way that you're following it and what we're going to do is that we're gonna do seven, eight, nine and ten. So four rows exactly just the way you see it here. The reason why they say to repeat it like this is that it's working into the stitch work exactly the way that you see it. So in this case do you see how you're just working into each of the stitches? It's the same stitch counts. So that's why they say to repeat row number two for seven, eight, nine and ten. So let's get you started on that and then I'm gonna leave that for you and then we'll cover the repeat. Then on row number eleven is the final for the repeat and then you start all over again from four to eleven. So let's review number two and this is for seven, eight, nine and ten. So I'm not gonna do each one of those by themselves. So I'll just show it to you one time. So it's three, uh, chain three counts as the first double crochet and the next three become together. You already know what you're doing with that. We've been doing that several times already. So how many do you remember to go up? It's nine. So you're back on the counts of nine again. So you can either count it out or you can look and if you look it's the top middle one of the group of five that gets the five double crochets at the top of the peak. So I'm about to hit the top peak after this one so we can verify if you want to. So you get three together so there must be nine here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine and I knew that the next one was the middle of the five because I can see it and that will be five double crochets. So then you're going to go nine all the way down to the other side and then the, the bottom five will become together as, as one stitch which we can do that as well. So you can either look 
to see where it is. So you can actually physically see it. So that you got the middle one and the next one and the next one. So these are the five that will come together. But you can count it if you wish. So let's just do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So nine are in. That means the next five come together. Let's verify. So this is the middle one. So that you got these two which is part of the five and the next two which is part of the five. So my nine coming down where I showed you before is exactly where it's supposed to go. So what I want you to do is go up and down in the motion all the way across. I will just touch on how to finish off and then you're gonna do number um, eight, nine, and ten on your own and then me back and we'll do number eleven. Okay, so there's six loops on the hook and then just go nine up and then five at the top and then nine down and I'll see at the edge of this one and I'll show you just to recap on how to finish the row. So as you come down the final edge there will be nine by itself and then the next three are together as normal and then put those together now and then the final turning chain has one double crochet. So that was row number seven. So I now need you to do the same thing now for eight, nine, and ten and meet me back here. So that's another three rows. On screen is row number seven, eight, nine, and ten. So at the time of filming I just noticed that there's a pattern error and I've already contacted uh, your inspirations and you'll see this change in the future. So it's stated here in the instructions. Let me just zoom right into that and it's stated that row number eleven is going to be worked in the front loops. But the pattern states over here it's worked in the back loops. It should be the back loops. So at the time of filming um, it will show that it's in the front loops here but it's technically in the back. So just be cautious of that. I am going to follow the instructions as it states right here. So you'll notice that change in the future. So as we now progress into row number 11 we're going to chain up three and the first three are going to be come together. We're gonna use the back loops only so that we can leave ourselves. How did I know if the back loops or the front loops was correct? Well if I look at the project here the right side is facing up so the good side. So I notice that the fringe has to be attached and in a way that it's gonna be there. So if I go in the front loop right now there's nowhere for me to attach the fringe to come and drape down so that I know that I have to use the back loop so that I have a loop left so that I can attach the fringe. So as we now progress into row number 11 it is exactly identical to what you did before. Okay, so you'll notice that row number three never repeated itself the way that it's written because row number 11 is the new three. So what's happening here is, here is that it's exactly the same except for using the back loops only all the way across. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. So let's begin row number 11. This is the final for the repeat. So let's begin row number 11. So you chain up three counts as your first double crochet. In the back loops only then and the next three they're gonna be come together. So just diving in. If you don't know what back loops are if you're new to crochet or you're not sure is that there's always two strands that make up a stitch. The first, first strand closest to you is the front loop and the next one that is furthest away from you is the back loop. So we knew that the back loop was the right answer for this and not the front loop because we need to leave these loops left open for you to do fringe work later. So the first three in the back loops only become together leaving the front loops exposed for tying on the fringe at another time. So once you have the first three together you chain up one, skip one and in the back loop of the next double crochet. Chain one. So do you remember how many gapping spaces that we had when we did this before? We had five. So there's five of these gapping spaces left when you're going all the way up and down. So now there's four that you see. So one, two, three, four, chain one. So the next one is the middle one of the grouping of five and that is gonna have five double crochets right into the middle there and it's in the back loop only. And then you start down the other side. So chain one to begin and skip one, go to the back loop of the next and so on. So there's gonna be five gapping spaces. I just gotta put this onto the table so it's not so heavy. And it's amazing this little sample uh, is got a bit of weight to it. So I, c I can know that when this afghan's done for you you got a weighted afghan pretty much as well and something that's in style and nice and thick and trendy. So I think I might have just gone too many. So I have five, uh, four spaces. So one, two, three, four and the fifth space. 
So the fifth I'm about to create. So the next five will become together. So skipping one and back uh, loops only grabbing the next five which is the base. So when you grab five like that there's six loops left on the hook. Pull through all of them and then chain one and start going up. So skipping the next one and just go to the one after that. And chain one. So you're looking for four uh, complete spaces because then the fifth is then the fifth space and you should be back at the top again. So I have one, two, three, four. So now this is the fifth space and then skipping one takes you to the middle of the grouping of five. And there will be five double crochets in that one. So you'll do that up and down to create this and you can see that a ridge has been created because you're using the back loops only. And then you come down. So skipping one and going down. So how many is spaces? It's five. The only reason why I keep saying that A it's not to annoy you but B it's to actually make sure that you you can keep an eye on your counting without really being obsessed about it. So there's four that are complete so this must be your fifth one you're about to do. And so skipping one and the next three is gonna be come together and that should take you right to the end. Leaving one stitch left which is this one and it's right in the turning chain. So that was row number 11. So you can see that the um, the ridges are now in here and now you have loops left over to apply your fringe. So now you're going to start rows number four all the way to 11 again. So four is just underneath this, this popcorn work that you see. So four all the way to where you are up here. This is the repeat. So there's a lot there to it. But you can see that there's a lot of repeating stitches that you already know. So it's not a lot of thinking power and these bobbles are amazing. So let's take a look at the fringing area because that's kinda next. So once you got all this done is that the front loops here are going to be where the fringe is going to dangle from. So let's talk about the fringe. So it says to make the fringe a total of 12 inches. So it says that you need two strands of going the fringe. So what I would do if I were you, I only have one ball here off camera because it's a sample. But what I would do is grab maybe two balls or grab the inside of the ball and outside so you have two strands going at the same time. And then what you're going to do then is being able to just uh, cut it. So you're just gonna have two strands just like that. So what I want to do is that I want to cut it and it says to do it about 12 inches. I'm just gonna assume this is and all I'm just going to do is then trim the other side if you're gonna do it this way. And now I'm going to fold it equally in half. So the idea with the fringe is that you wanna be consistent about it. So it says to evenly space so it looks like it's every other um, loop that when you're going to do this. So you're just gonna start right in the edge and go in the front loop only. So just go in the front loop and you're just gonna grab the yarn, pull through and then pull through the remaining that's in your hand through that loop and let it dangle down. Once you do the first few you're gonna notice how long it is. So if you think 12 inches is way too long, I think it was longer than 12, you wanna trim it. So you don't wanna bury in all this beautiful uh, popcorn work. So what you would want to do at the end is that you're going to then just kind of evenly cut it so you, you'll just go every other one to so go to the next loop and do next and then just cut it and just kind of up and down like so. So this would be how you would do it if you wanted to do the fringe and it's actually not a hard idea and I was actually at one of the um, home decorating stores and I noticed this kind of idea is in trend too. So this is the bobble and fringe blanket by Yarnspirations.com. It's a pretty easy pattern generally to follow and you'll love the texture I think and this pattern is really quite easy to follow. That's it for now. Have a great day. We'll see ya.